everyone. Welcome to the July 2021 virtual field trip to Cope Family Reservation. My name is Michelle Brocious. I am your Burger Walk leader tonight. I am a Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society board member and field trip co-coordinator. Uh, a little bit about this program if you've never attended before. Each month I designate a location in Northeast Ohio uh, for participants to go and visit independently. And I ask those participants to go to then provide to me an account of their experience. This can be a combination of photographs, drawings, journaling, um, bird lists, species lists, anything like that. Um, give those to me and then I put this presentation together uh, to share the following month um, on this call. So. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the presentation. We have five people, including myself, go to the reservation. So we have those stories to share. And then we'll have a little discussion at the end. All right. There we go. So Cope Family Reservation. Beginning in 2003, a group of Avon Lake residents began discussing the preservation of a large tract of forest land in their city. Thus, Save the Woods was born, and over the next few years, an agreement between Save the Woods, the city of Avon Lake, and the Metro Parks brought to fruition the creation of another beautiful Metro Park. In the summer of 2008, development of trails began, and on November 8, 2008, Cope Family Reservation officially opened to the public. It was named after local builder developer Herman Bucky Cope for his gracious donation of 68 acres of the 162-acre park. My entire computer screen is on. So you can see yeah, the presentation. Can, yeah, we can see the presentation mode. You know, you got all your slides along the side and all the things. I don't know if you have it on. No, what I, I am, you know, I might have shared the wrong thing. Thank you for letting me know so early. Yeah. Let me stop screen sharing because it, when, when I go to share, it has two presentations. I must have picked the wrong one. Let's try this one. Is that better? Okay, fantastic. All right. So let's see, where was I? Um, I'll start in the middle of that first paragraph. In the summer of 2008, development of trails began, and on November 8, 2008, Cope Family Reservation officially opened to the public. It was named after local builder developer Herman Bucky Cope for his gracious donation of 68 acres of the 162-acre park. More trails have been added since then, bringing the trail to over three miles, and that is from the Lorain County Metro Park's Cope Family Reservation page. And then additionally here, the Cope Family Reservation consists of approximately 170 acres of oak hickory woodlands accompanied by maple, elm, ash, cherry, sassafras, and willow. Daily visits by white-tailed deer and fox squirrel make for great wildlife viewing year-round. With close proximity to Lake Erie, the park's streamside woodlands provide an important stopover for migrating species and a perfect nesting site for area raptors. Gable and Hyder Creeks provide essential resources for wildlife. And that is from the Lorraine County Metro Park Cope Family Reservation Info page. And then um, on the left-hand side there, I took that picture of the Gable Creek Trail at Cope Family Reservation. You can see there's a little bridge in the distance. It was just a very um, picturesque, so I, I captured that moment. All right, we had two target species. The first one is the Eastern Wood Peewee. The olive brown easternwood peewee is conspicuous, is inconspicuous until it opens its bill and gives its unmistakable slurred call, peewee, a characteristic sound of eastern summers. These small flycatchers perch on dead branches in the mid canopy and sally out after flying insects. Though identifying flycatchers can be confusing, peewees are grayer overall with longer wings than other flycatchers. They lack the eye rings of the empidonarch species while they're less brown with stronger wing bars than a Phoebe. With a careful look, they're quite distinctive, and that is from the Cornell Web Ornithology Eastern Wood Peewee page. And then uh, a picture I took of an Easter Wood Peewee at Cope Family Reservation. The second target species, red-headed woodpecker. 
The gorgeous red-headed woodpecker is so boldly patterned it's been called a flying checkerboard with an entirely crimson head, a snow-white body, and half-white, half-inky black wings. These birds don't act quite like most other woodpeckers. They're adept at catching insects in the air, and they eat lots of acorns and beech nuts, often hiding away extra food in tree crevices for later. This magnificent species has declined severely in the past half century because of habitat loss and changes to its food supply. Again, that was taken from Cornell Lab of Ornithology, and this time the red-headed woodpecker page. And a photo I took of a red-headed woodpecker at the Oak Family Reservation on the right-hand side there. All right, so I'm the first one up here with 21 species. I visited the reservation on July 24th, um, arriving a little after 9 a.m. and birded for roughly two and a half hours. I parked at the Avon Lake Public Library and found a storybook trail, the trail that links the library to the reservation to be charming. The trail features periodic displays of the children's book, The Day the Cramps Quit by Drew DeWalt, which is a British family favorite. The storybook trail runs through the Avon Lake High School property on its way to the reservation. Therefore, I soon exited the woodland area and found myself facing the Avon Lake Memorial Stadium and quite a bit of bird activity. The first thing I noticed were swallows buzzing around a grassy area just east of the football field, but still within the chain link fence surrounding the stadium. I approached the fence for a better look and quickly identified these as barn swallows, being cobalt blue above and rufous brown below. The absence of a white streak on the forehead ruled out cliff swallow. And there's a picture of the storybook trail at Cope Family Reservation uh, that I took on my way to the stadium. All right, I soon noticed more bird activity along the chain link fence itself and took several steps back and circled wide to get a better view. An eastern kingbird spent quite a bit of time on the fence and the vegetation growing along the structure. A fledgling eastern bluebird also perched for a short amount of time before joining its two siblings further away. I was delighted when a mature red-headed woodpecker flew into the scene and then two juveniles. I also saw an American robin, house finch, and shipping sparrow. There on the left-hand side, a picture of the eastern kingbird at Pope Family Reservation. And then here are two more uh, pictures of that same eastern kingbird on the left there, just a slightly different pose, but on the same branch as the previous page. And then it had flown down to the chain link fence, and I got a picture of it um, with its back to me, but its head turned to the left. And here are two pictures of the eastern bluebird, the fledgling, that landed on the fence and then flew off. And here's the red-headed woodpecker at Cope Family Reservation. And then uh, one of the two juveniles. The, the, this juvenile was closer, so I concentrated my photography on this individual. Um, its sibling was further back, um, and I knew I wouldn't be able to zoom in as, as close. So this juvenile red-headed woodpecker at Cope Family Reservation on the chain link fence. And it was actually eating. There must have been some bugs down in this hole, it kept eating out of here. So, or, or scrounging around in there for some reason. All right, at this point it started to rain lightly, so I decided to say goodbye to these lovely birds and once again wander beneath the tree canopy toward the reservation. As I continued to walk along the trail, I found it very interesting that the trees seemed to be growing in rows along with rows of grasses. So there's a picture of the woodland scene. You can see um, the rows here. I did read and I was reading about the reservation that it was once uh, agricultural, so I'm wondering if this pattern is just kind of left over from that. All right, I turned onto the Armor Trail, which is the main trail that runs through the northern part of the reservation, and here I decided to try out a feature of the Merlin Bird ID app, the Sound ID, as there was quite a bit of bird song in the area. Uh, this feature is so new to me that I don't yet rely on it for a positive ID, but use it as a tool to suggest birds that may be in the area. I would have loved to have picked a great horn owl for this trip. As you can see, it's, it's showing <laughs> up to my surprise right here. Um, but I didn't see it, nor did I happen to hear anything that sounded like an owl, so perhaps next time. However, I was delighted to see the second target species pop up, the Easterwood peewee. A helpful feature of the sound ID is that it highlights the species in the list during an active call, so I quickly learned that an Easterwood peewee calls its own name, the, the peewee. 
sound. I desperately wanted to see this bird and get a few photos, so I began tracking it along the trail, looking for movement in the leaves and along branches. I also took note that a red-eyed vireo was in the neighborhood, as well as white-breasted nuthatch. Both species were sighted during this trip. Uh, meanwhile, the call of the Easternwood Peewee seemed to be moving down the trail, and I gave chase. I was briefly stopped by two gentlemen who were curious as to what I was doing and maintained a polite interest as I told them. We then discussed the bird disease that is plaguing most of Ohio and surrounding states, and then they went on their way with wishes of a pleasant day. I raced to catch up with the EWP, who apparently was not interested in our conversation, and I found it. So I was really excited that I did find the bird, and I, I took a couple pictures. Um, as I mentioned before, it was a rainy day, overcast, not a lot of sunlight, and then this was you know, in the shaded area of the forest, which didn't help my photography, but I took the photos and I lightened them up as best I could um, to be able to show you all what they look like. All right, so next I made my way to Gable Creek Trail, which is appropriately named as it hugs Gable Creek. I found this to be a very enjoyable leg of my journey, though not many photographs are taken. The tufted tip mice were very active in this part of the reservation, and here is where I sighted the first red-eyed vireo of the trip. I also heard but did not see an American goldfinch. On my return, I decided to take a lesser trail that runs parallel to the storybook trail and was delighted to see an eastern BB, eastern wood peewee, red eye vireo, American robin, and downy woodpecker. And then on the left there is the downy woodpecker at Pope Family Reservation. I came back to the football stadium and the chain link fence where I had so much fun at the start of my journey but was met with disappointment as the area was now quiet. I soon realized why when a red-tailed hawk took flight out of a nearby tree. I lost the hawk as it flew into the woods toward the library. I was heading that way anyway, so I decided to walk over to the spot to see if it was still close. I looked and found nothing. I was about to continue on toward my car when the hawk came crashing back out with a twig in its beak. Uh, this time I tracked it to a tree in the clearing that overlooks the football stadium where it has a nest. I was happy to see that its mate was already there. Both the male and female build and conduct the surface of the nest, which is composed of dry sticks high up in a tree that typically has a good view of the surrounding area. In this case, the birds must be football fans, as this nest overlooks the stadium. Uh, Red-tailed hawk nests can be as deep as six and a half feet uh, while measuring three feet across. However, this nest seems much shallower than six and a half feet. And you can't really tell in this picture because I've zoomed in so much on the nest and that uh, red-tailed hawk. Um, but here uh, on the left there, I, I kind of zoomed out a little bit to try and capture that whole nest. Um, and it, it just doesn't look to be as deep as six and a half feet. So either they didn't want that or they're still building it. Um, and then on the right, not the best picture, but I did want to show that there was a second bird in that nest. Um, and you can, you can see the, the red tail feathers. Um, to positively identify it as a red-tailed hawk. And then if that wasn't good enough, here you have the belly band. Um, that's definitely a red-tailed hawk. All right, so here's my bird list. Notable species, the red-tailed hawk was exciting to see. Uh, Red-headed woodpecker and eastern wood peewee were the target species. The eastern kingbird was a delight, and I always love seeing an eastern bluebird. So, and there's uh, another picture of the Eastern Kingbird at Cope Family Reservation, uh, still sitting on that same branch, just turning its head a slightly different way. Um, so a different pose for that bird. All right, uh, next up is Elisa Gerbic. Uh, she birded on July 3rd and saw 24 species. And this is what she says about her, um, her visit. Uh, on July 3rd, I visited Cope Family Reservation for the first time ever. Throughout parts of the walk, I could see houses of the nearby neighborhoods. I started near the library and took the connector trail. I decided to walk along Gable Creek on the Armor Trail. I did see an eastern Phoebe near the bridge bobbing its tail. I heard crows in the distance, but only got a quick glimpse of them. An ebony jewel wing rested in the sun. When I made it to Bell Road Park, there were many tufted tip mice and American robins feeding their fledglings. I made my way through the park to the south loop where I found another eastern peavey and more fledgling tufted tit mice. As I started back, I saw a group of nine American crows calling loudly and searching for food on the ground. In this same area, I found a cooper's hawk sitting on a low branch. I saw quite a few red-headed woodpeckers throughout my walk. I frequently heard eastern wood peewees, 
but I didn't see them. At one point, I was surprised to find a fledgling eastern bluebird. I saw a red-tailed hawk on the lights at the stadium and more red-headed woodpeckers at the end of my walk. And then on the right-hand side, a, a picture of eastern Phoebe at Cote Family Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. And then uh, a picture of the ebony jeweling on the left and tufted titmouse on the right at Cope Family Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. And then uh, the fledgling American robin on the left and Cooper's hawk on the right at Cope Family Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. Fox squirrel on the left and red-headed woodpecker on the right at the reservation by Lisa. And I love the picture of that squirrel. It looks kind of surprised. <laughs> it's very cute. And then here's her bird list. The 24 species, notable species, include the Cooper's hawk, a red-tailed hawk, red-headed woodpecker was the target, eastern wood peewee, again the target, great crested flycatcher, that's always a great bird to see. I always love seeing those. And eastern bluebird are the ones that I highlighted as notable species. Um, and then a picture of the fledgling eastern bluebird on the left there at Cope Family Reservation by Lisa. All right, Nancy, you're up next. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And uh, sounds like a lot of us went on the same trails. Um, I was able to get 21 species, which is actually kind of low, I thought. And, um, but I didn't get a chance to see the red-tailed hawk or Cooper's hawk. So it's so nice to see lists from other people and what they were able to find. But um, I did take a couple of photographs. I don't take photographs of things that move fast. Uh, I don't know if... Uh, Michelle put the photograph that I will have a little bit later on of some snails. They don't move fast, so I took a picture of those. <laughs> <laughs> I used all your pictures. At okay, time. all right. Yeah, so I visited on July 10th, and I parked at the at the uh, uh, library, the Avon Lake Library. Um, I did a little bit of research before going out. First of all, I wanted to find out where it was exactly, and then I took a look at the Lorain County Metro Parks website and, and could see on a map um, that it's a wooded area surrounded by a neighborhood. And of course, when I arrived, guess what I found? A wooded area surrounded by a neighborhood. Wow. Go figure. Um, so there, and there were a lot of people out already, walkers, dog walkers, bicycle riders, that type of stuff. So, uh, so it was pretty nice. Um, now, nobody so far has mentioned mosquitoes. I mean, not only did I see a bazillion fox squirrels there, but the mosquitoes were kind of uh, everywhere, too. Um, and I didn't bring my mosquito repellent. So it really was kind of difficult to, to stop and bird uh, while, you know, flapping and slapping at that mosquitoes. Um, but what kind of hit me when I was able to look at, at the when walking through is this reservation kind of reminds me a little bit of Bradley Woods which is you know in Cuyahoga County but very close to the Lorraine County border uh, or Sandy Ridge Reservation the woodland just before you get to the, the, the wetland area and that area that is very close to Lake Erie um, has some interesting geology. Um, there are some places where it's a little higher ground and then there's like swale areas in between that are wet and then a little higher ground and there these are the former beach ridges when Lake Erie after uh, the glaciers melted after Lake Erie was retreating and deposited uh, uh, sand and, and whatever materials were washed up and uh, so again so you got these beach ridges which are higher ground and then areas that are a little uh, more like a swale uh, another beach ridge more like a swale so um, it, mosquitoes are definitely part of the, the habitat and environment there um, so I 
got to the uh, library access trail, which again is by the library, and guess what? I got the two target species real quickly. A uh, red-headed woodpecker right off the bat, and then a short time later, uh, I heard but didn't see it at that time, the eastern wood peewee, uh, peewee. And then, of course, I said, oh, I can go home now. Not really. Because I wanted to see, you know, what other things were along the trails. Um, other people have mentioned taking the Armor Trail and up, up to the Gable Creek Trail. And that's what I took a photo of is that Gable Creek Trail. Um, really very nice. Next slide, please. And thank you for the wood pee Eastern Wood Peewee photograph, Michelle. Um, I don't know if, if the birds were a little quieter because it was, you know, already, you know, kind of early in July or near mid-July, or maybe nesting for some species was over, or maybe the habitat was was kind of um, similar all the way through. But I, I found the diversity of bird species is, was kind of low. But that's just my personal view. Um, I also noticed that the understory of the forest was sparse. So um, the neighborhood places where there was forest and then edge habitat and then uh, lawns and stuff seemed a little bit more conducive to having a diversity of species. So I, I did run into a couple of families of American crows. Now the young were about the size of the adults but still begging for food and the uh, adults didn't really seem to be real concerned about that. Uh, tufted titmouse were, were uh, abundant, great crested flycatcher, blue jay, red-eyed vireo. These are all the, the woodland species that one might expect in a forest area. Of course, the red-headed woodpecker and eastern wood peewee, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, now, as I got closer to the homes and, and edges of the neighborhoods and the yards, then I was starting to pick up the species that people would be uh, having, again, in a, in a neighborhood, like the downy and, and red-bellied woodpeckers, chickadees, nuthatch, house wren. Um, and as I was walking in a couple of areas, especially uh, heading back to my car, um, chimney swift, purple martin, and barn swallow uh, were sighted uh, only because I was walking on a sidewalk from where I had exited one of the trails and back to the to the library. So again, it's um, being so close to Lake Erie, those aerial insectivores, the swift and the martin and the swallows, were were probably attracted to the insects uh, near the lake. And then again, uh, robin, house finch, goldfinch, chipping sparrow, grackle, and cardinal were some of the other uh, typical neighborhood species that I was able to, to see. Next slide, please. And so here's my list. Oh, and there's my lovely photograph of a, of a fungus that was just absolutely being eaten by the slugs. You can see the slugs, they're the ones with the, of the shell. And there, there is a snail in there somewhere, maybe two or three of them, but uh, they were just feasting on that, on that fungus. So that's, that's what I kind of take photographs of. But I was also getting eaten up by mosquitoes there too. And I see Michelle has highlighted, of course, the target species, the red-headed woodpecker and the peewee. Um, she also highlighted the Great Crested Flycatcher and Red-Eyed Vireo, Barn Swallow, and Chipping Sparrow. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, and again, I, I've said it before on these virtual field trips, but the red highlights are just what are notable to me. Like, you might all have your different opinions, and that's, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, thank you for that. And I had... I, I had brought bug spray with me. I always carry it in my backpack, but yes, I had to reapply it several times for the mosquitoes. They, they were, even when I went, and I think um, someone else coming up even mentioned that as well. So it wasn't just you, Nancy. All right. You, I you just didn't thought go mosquitoes on a lucky day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they thought maybe I was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let me continue on. 
All right, uh, up next is Sean Missick with 14 species, and Sean visited the reservation three times. The dates visited 7-4, 7-10, and 7-20. He says, with July 4th falling on a Sunday, I felt this was the perfect opportunity to explore this new location without the place being crowded. When I arrived at the park, I quickly noticed that parking wasn't located within the park as many others usually were. After doing some research, I found parking at the library and I began my journey. At first, I only saw the main path that led straight through and couldn't see any other paths. Thankfully, this was not the case and I was deceived by the length of the central path. As I made my way into the park, the first bird I saw was a crow. I have not seen crows in trees in a while. Usually when I see them, they are flying overhead or squawking in a far away tree where I can't see them. This was my chance to get a shot and I gladly took it. So a um, picture that Sean took of those two American crows on the right hand side there at Coates Family Reservation. And that's a really beautiful photo. And then two more pictures of the American crow at Coat Family Reservation by Sean. And I continued up the main trail and the other path finally appeared. I started along the Gable Creek Trail to my left and I couldn't get enough of this trail. Easy to walk and pleasant scenery helped me to actually loop this trail twice. While walking close to the small bridge, I did find an eastern Phoebe that was flying between banks and landing on a small branch near the water. The majority of the birds I saw came at the end of the park near Armour Road. I found red-headed and red-bellied woodpeckers hanging around this area. As usual, the red-bellied woodpeckers were very vocal and let you know that, that they were there. The red-headed woodpeckers were not as vocal, however, their vibrant colors were highly visible as they flew through the air. I also heard the call of a pileated woodpecker while I was back there, but after searching for quite some time, I did not find it. So beautiful photo of the red-headed woodpecker at Coat Family Reservation by Sean Missig on the left. And here's two more photos of the red-headed woodpecker at Coat Family Reservation by Sean. All right, next I made my way to the library trail, but instead of taking the main paved trail, I found a dirt trail and followed that. This trail wound its way through the woods, and at one point I wasn't sure where I would come out at. This would all pay off in the long run, though. As I continued walking, I saw a larger bird take off from a tree and fly to another one. I could tell this was a hawk, but it was too far away to make an accurate ID. However, I knew where it flew, and luckily for me, the path led me towards the landing site. When I eventually made my way into the area, I was greeted by the hawk with very loud calls that sounded like it was right above me. I searched and searched, but I could not find where the bird was hiding. After three calls, after three calls, the hawk stopped and I decided to press onward. I made my way up to the last part of the library trail and found a red-headed woodpecker that was flying from a power pole to a tree and repeating this every few minutes. Thankfully, I was able to get a shot when it was on top of the power pole and its beak was loaded with bugs. And I would bet he was taking, that I would bet he was taking back to his young. After I spent some time photographing the woodpecker, the hawk decided to show itself by soaring over the field nearby. As it was circling, the sun caught its feathers just right, and I was able to see that it was a red-tailed hawk. The hawk circled a few times before disappearing into the trees once again. This was the perfect way to end the day. The photo of the red-headed woodpecker uh, with the bugs in its beak at Cope Family Reservation by Sean Missig. Right, my visit on 710 was a little less eventful. However, some patience paid off. I followed a very similar path to my first visit, but spent some extra time by the Armour Road entrance. At first, I encountered a murder of crow, the likes of which I have never seen. I estimated that there were at least 30 of them, and they were either sitting on branches or playing, fighting amongst each other. They were also quite noisy, and at first, I had thought that maybe a hawk or owl was around, but I did not find any evidence of either. It was nice to watch their behavior, though, and made for a rather comical start to the day. Just before I was ready to leave the area, I heard the pileated woodpecker calling quite loudly, and I focused my efforts to find this bird. A short walk up the main path from where I was at, and there it was, high up in the trees, digging for food and making plenty of calls. After several shots, it decided that it didn't want its picture taken anymore and flew off. I also encountered many squirrels and chipmunks during the visit, and it almost seemed like they were posing for me. Some were more playful than others, but they all didn't mind that I was there. Uh, a gorgeous picture of Highlighted Woodpecker at Cook Family Reservation 
uh, by Sean on the left hand side there. And then another picture of the pileated woodpecker on the left and a juvenile American robin on the right at Hope Family Reservation by Sean Misick. And then these super cute chipmunks at the reservation by Sean. I, they're both cute, but I like the one on the left, how it seems to be just caught in the sun. It's very, very pretty. And you can see it's, um, it's, eye, it's eye glint, too. Very nice. All right, two squirrels here at the reservation by Sean. Right, my final visit was on 720 and it was eerily quiet when I started walking through the park. I'm pretty sure it had to do with the time I was there since I didn't make it out until about 5 p.m. Despite the park being quiet, I did see a small deer family, one mother and two fawns, grazing off the path by the library. This was a nice surprise to, the, to start off the trip. I also saw my first blue jay for this location and a downy woodpecker. Unfortunately, the mosquitoes found me very quickly and I cut this trip short. Uh, Coat Family Reservation is a location that I probably should have known about already, but I did not learn about it until this virtual field trip. I'm happy to say that I enjoyed my visits and will definitely be back to this location for years to come. And a, a beautiful picture of the white-tailed deer family at Coat Family Reservation by Sean Misig. And here is Sean's bird list, notable species. Um, the red-bellied woodpecker, red-tailed hawk, pileated woodpecker, and downy woodpecker. And I didn't highlight the red-headed woodpecker, and I totally should have. So I will make sure that gets highlighted, but that is a target species there um, down on number 14. And a beautiful picture of a red-tailed hawk at Colt Family Reservation by Sean Missig. All right, I believe this is our last participant. Al Rand uh, visited the reservation on July 24th, the same day I went, and he um, found 14 species. He says, I made one trip to the Cope Family Reservation the evening of July 24th. The walk was fairly uneventful from a uh, bird-wise, but I was still able to log 14 species. I didn't wander around as much as I would have liked to because the biting insects were unbearable, even with a liberal application of repellent. How is it that they always find a way into your ears, nose, and eyes? Uh, despite the nuisance, insects were the highlight of my visit. I discovered a reddish-brown stag beetle crossing the path in front of me while back by the creek. This is one of the larger beetles I've seen before. I got it to pose for a few pictures using the macro setting on the camera. All I needed to do was wave a small twig in front of it to get it to take a defensive posture. The beetle gets its name from the resemblance of its antenna to deer antlers. So, photo on the right of the reddish brown stag beetle at Cope Family Reservation by Al Rand. Uh, further down the path, I encountered a friendly eastern comma butterfly. It kept flying past me, so I put my arm out on a whim and it landed on me. I was able to get some close up pictures before transferring it to my finger, where it stayed with me for a good distance as I headed back to the car. Many people looked at me like I was crazy, yet none stopped to ask any questions. There are lots. Uh, looking around the reservation from the past, I noticed. There were very little under. There was very little undergrowth. This suggests the area may be alive with spring ephemeral wildflowers in March and April. The ephemeral time their emergence early on. I'm sorry. The ephemeral time their emergence early on before the trees leaf out and block the sun's rays. I anticipate a return to the reservation to find out if my hunch pans out. All right. So there on the left hand side, an eastern comma butterfly at Cope Family Reservation by Al Rand. All right, then here's his bird list. Red-headed woodpecker, eastern wood peewee, great crested flycatcher, red-eyed vireo, barn swallow, and shipping sparrow were the notable species. And another picture of the reddish brown stag beetle at Cope Family Reservation by Al Rand. All right, and that's it. So uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you to Lisa Gerbic, Nancy Howell, Sean Missig, and Al Rand. And a huge thank you to the City of Avon Lake and Lorraine County Metro Parks for Coke Family Reservation. I put the address there. I believe that is the address of the library. Um, the library is uh, near the Electric Boulevard Road, but if you go towards the back of the parking lot, you'll see signs for Coke Family Reservation Park there, and you can see the Connector Trail past the stadium, look for the hawk nest, 
um, look for other bird activity at the stadium, and then continue on to the reservation. Uh, visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities as well. Uh, this month, the month of August, we are um, having our virtual field trip at the Rookery in Chesterland, Geauga County, in search of the Eastern CB, I believe. I believe that's what I chose from that location. Uh, so the, there's a photo there of an Eastern Kingbird at Coke Family Reservation by myself. Um, a different pose from the other ones. I just I took many pictures of this bird. It just was in the right light, and um, it was probably the bird of the visit for me. So with that, I would like to open this up for discussion. Um, yes, Nancy, the mosquitoes were awful. <laughs> <laughs> many people mentioned that. Yeah, I noticed um, two people mentioned the, the biting insects. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, so, I like the um, I like the the photo of the butterfly, the the comma eastern comma, and I like the photo of the stag beetle too. Those are that's, yeah, that's really nice. I just take pictures of slugs and snails. <laughs> <laughs> take pictures of whatever interests you. That's what I do as well. It's all interesting. Any other um, thoughts or comments or questions? I did not walk towards the the football field, and you know, it sounded as though you, Michelle, had a, a really nice set of birds along that that uh, chain link fence area. So I just thought, oh gosh, a oh, football field. There's going to be nothing there. Well, I should I should have checked it out. <laughs> I think I walked every other trail. Yeah, yeah. I I was surprised that I had good luck there. It just you know. It was a, a nice morning. Well, it did start to rain a little later on, but the birds were out, and for some reason, they really liked that urban setting that morning. I was surprised that they were building a nest, so they didn't have young in the nest. I didn't happen to see any little heads peeking up. I don't. I mean, it was a nest, right? That looked like a nest to me. Yeah, and you said the one bird came back with a twig. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you went July 24th, July 24th. right? Yeah, yeah, I thought that was kind of late. That's getting kind of late. Now, maybe they're just practicing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let me go. I want to go back because I was wondering. Hold on, let me, let me end my and show so I can go back easily because I want to pull up these pictures again of a hawk and I don't know if it's possible to tell how young or old this one is it doesn't have much of a belly band I is that just a variation that doesn't matter with age yeah, it doesn't matter okay um, yeah some of them have hardly any belly band and some can have quite a bit it's just okay uh, but if you can go back to the the photo with the birds the and the uh, adults, you know, full adult, red tails, we'll have the red tail and dark eyes. And they do. Yeah, and there's an, it's a, it's a little nest. I made that comment, um, you know, I, I looked up what the dimensions of a red tail hawk nest usually are, and it's uh, six and a half feet deep. And this right here is as far down as it went. And I don't know how, how a foot and a half is that how how long would a red tailed hawk be you know, like <laughs> yeah the photo is not up on the screen you just have your your uh main screen with all your folders on it oh man all right i'm sorry i went back just to here let me there it is okay hold on let me um i gotta flip it around now i will get the hang of this that's oh, all right. Actually. <laughs> I okay. All right. So there. So there's the belly band that I was talking about. Sorry, I thought I had it up and was showing you. And then going back, here's the the nest. Does not look to be as deep as yeah. typical. No. No. It, was, um, it looks like they're just building it. Maybe you yeah. know. Well, you know, Avon Lake is a growing community, so and more more and more things are being built there. So maybe they. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, like I said, maybe they're just getting some practice. But yeah, there's two of them, and they're they seem ready. Yeah. Um, when when do red tail hawks typically um, mate and produce eggs? 
Like, is that at the same time as other birds? Or it would be spring, spring you know, yeah, it would be okay. April, May, okay. that kind of stuff. Although, I have a friend who took photographs recent uh, of two fledgling great, uh, uh, red-tailed hawks. I mean, they were still in the nest uh, as of, like, a week ago. Hmm. But okay. they were, you know almost pretty much fully feathered, so I, I still think these guys were just, yeah, uh, you know, practicing. Okay. But, uh, you know, I'll go back in, uh, you know, in the spring or see what happens uh, in the winter and that kind of stuff, and maybe, maybe it'll, they'll, they'll be there. Okay, fantastic. I'll definitely check it out next year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I didn't see any little heads, you know, or hear any little cries, so yeah. it really didn't seem like that there were any any babies in the nest. So, okay. Well, thank you for that information. So any I other? made it out to I made it out to the rookery on Sunday. Okay. And it's a wonderful place. I've actually been there before. Uh, I actually DJed a wedding there. So I'm kind of familiar with it, but I didn't get to go on any of the paths uh, when I was there for DJing. However, um, the one bit of bad news I can say is if you thought the bugs were bad at this location, they are 20 times worse there. I had so much trouble taking pictures and many times I was holding the shutter button as I was getting bit. And it, for me, it doesn't matter how much repellent I put on, they find me and they just eat me alive. So oh, that's take a lot of bug sorry. spray if you go. Okay. It, it's Thank okay. It, it, it happens to me every year, uh, but it is a very nice location. The uh, paths that I walked on, were were very very well kept and um very nice i can't remember the name of it but it actually runs along the wetlands and but based on the name you wouldn't think it did uh Is it the, so the definitely paved make, trail the paved trail there um that goes under the cover no bridge. okay a different one no i did walk that one though Okay. Um, and I did go through the covered bridge, and I got pictures of the covered bridge and all that, and, and that one was nice. Um, actually, come to think of it, it might have been that one. Okay. But, yeah, there, there, there there's a couple wetlands, and then um, the other trail is just kind of a loop that kind of takes you around where the parking area is and does have a central trail that kind of cuts through some wildflowers, and the wildflowers are looking really right, are really nice right now. Okay. Oh, that's so, great. Very nice place. Oh, fantastic. Thanks for that. Did you happen to see the Eastern Phoebe? Did you get it? Uh, I didn't. No. Oh, okay. No, I did not. I, I missed out on that. Uh, I'm planning on going back this weekend, though. Okay. So hopefully more. And I'm planning on getting out there a lot earlier, too. Yeah. That's, that's I, I, you know, you can go birding any time. And, you know, Nancy has... Um, started these evening bird walks which are really great you can see birds in the evening but i always tend to go in the morning because i i feel that that's when the birds are most active it's really easy to see them yeah i've i've had my best luck definitely early morning and, and then it tends to taper off for me around 11 11 30 mm -hmm. uh unless i'm at sandy ridge sandy ridge yeah. doesn't matter what time of day there are exceptions yes <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's great. Thank you. And thank you for that heads up about bringing the, the bug spray. I'll make sure I have that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Maybe, maybe like two cases worth because <laughs> it, it was bad. All right. So, Tom, do you have anything to add about, you said you've been to Coke Family Reservation in the past. Um, do you have anything to add or any, any comments that you want to share? Um, that was me you were talking to? Yes. Yep. I, I, I was there last year. Yeah, I, you know, that, that hawk nest was, I think, was there. It looks like it's this 
the same kind of tree. Okay. That I remember it being. And um, it was a shallow nest. Okay. So yeah, was there last it. year? The okay. Yeah, last I think, was, I think it was just last year. I was there, maybe two years ago. But um, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed the the red-headed woodpeckers. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any anyone else want to chime in? All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for calling in and um, you know and participating in this virtual field trip. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you all uh, next month on this call. And um, hopefully, some of you are able to make it out to the rookery. If not, Sean went, and I plan to go. Um, Al usually makes it out. We'll see. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a very good evening. I'll see you next time. Thank you. It was awesome. Thanks, everyone. All right, Have a thank good you. evening. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks again. Perfect. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs>